Hi, this is Colin McDonald, and this is my take on Deke's techniques, and I'm calling it Over the Rainbow, It's Probably Snowing. And the first technique I'm going to demo is number 34, the Flawless Panorama. And I'm in Photoshop already. I've got a number of images, and the main thing to remember when you're doing a panorama like this is that you've got sufficient overlap. And generally between about a quarter to a half is the way to go. In this case, I've got roughly a third overlap between each of the images. Now, because I've got them all open, I'm going to go up to the File menu down to Automate, and then to Photo Merge. And I'm going to choose Cylindrical. I have found in my experience that Cylindrical and Auto tend to work pretty close together, and at least for these images. I'm going to add the files that are currently open, and then I'm going to get started with this because it takes a little while. Now, I could be running this from Bridge and then having it go over to Photoshop. I could be within Photoshop pointing to those files, but I just needed to save a little bit of time by having them already open. And so it's going to align the eight images that make up our composite. Now you can see the overlap that's here, and it's going to do its best to make sure that the uh, tones are the same, and then to create some very, very complicated masks that will give us, I think, a pretty pleasing result. Great. I'm going to pull back just a little bit, and I want to crop in some of my image. To do that, I'm going to do the C key, or go over here to our Crop tool. I'm going to preserve as much of the sky as I can, and probably something like that looks pretty good. Maybe about like there, I think will work for me. Hit the Return key, and now what I want to do is merge all of my layers together over here. And I'm going to Command click on the PC, I'd Control click to select the image itself up to the Select menu, and then inverse my selection to select the transparent areas. At this point, I'm going to expand that selection. I'm going to modify it by expanding it. And for the resolution, I've got 5 pixels tends to work pretty well. I'm going to Shift Delete, which is to fill. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to make a content aware fill. We'll say OK. And that's going to fill each of the transparent areas on this image, of which there are three, with the appropriate background image. I'm going to drop my selection, Command D, and we see we've got a pretty good looking image right here. A couple things that I, I want to make note of. First off, if I get full size, I've got a really nice looking image. And if I drop back into Fit in Window, Command 0 or Control 0, maybe take it a little bit more, Command minus, so that I can see what I'm doing. One of the techniques that I want to explore is number 4 by Deke, and that's the layer comps. I've got my layers comps panel open here already. I want to take a snapshot of this image so that I can show this later to my client. This is going to be the original image. And I've noticed that I've got visibility and appearance, both of these set. I want to swing into a second tutorial that Deke has, and that's creating a synthetic rainbow, number 77. To do that, I need to find out how big my image is. I'm going to do that by Option Command I. On the PC, this would be Alt Control I. I see that it's 3714 pixels wide. And I'm going to go into my marquee tool. That's M for marquee and do a fixed size up over here. Normally it's set to normal. I'm going to change it to fixed size, crank in the value that I just grabbed earlier, which is 3714, and a height of roughly 150 pixels, or thereabouts. When I click, what's going to happen is I'll have an area that is going to be selected. Now, I don't want to lay the rainbow on the current crater layer, so I'm going to click on the new layer icon down over here, so anything I do will be on that separate layer. I'm going to fill it with my Blend tool over here, B for Blend. And up over here, I'm going to choose a modified version of the transparent rainbow that we have over here. Uh, Deke feels that the magenta is too bright, darkens that down. Same thing with the cyan. And added two separate colors, an orange and a purple, or a violet. I'm going to drag through here, holding the, the Shift key to constrain this to vertical. I'm going to drop my selection, Command D for drop. And now I'm going to do a transformation on this. I do a transformation or a free transform, Command T, Control T on the PC. I'm going to go up here to this icon to warp my selection to do, and finally over here to choose arc. Now I'd like to have a bigger arc than this, and so where it's now by default 50 degrees, I'm going to change this to a 90 percent, excuse me, I said degrees. We'll go up over here to go back to a regular transform. And I'm going to hold down my, um, my spacebar to pull this down a little bit, just so I can see what I'm working with. And I'd like to make this guy smaller a little bit further down. And so I start dragging in from one of the top corners. 
But to make this a proportional one, I hold down my Shift key, and to make sure that I'm pulling it from the center, I also hold down my Option key. And so I pull it down, maybe something like this, so that I can see what I'm doing. I click and drag it into place, and that's looking not bad. I think a little bit more. So again, Shift, Option, pull this in some more, and that's looking pretty good. So I think with that, I'm going to hit the Return key to punch that in. And I need to make this into a smart object. So up over here where it says Layer 1, which I'm going to double click on to call Rainbow, I'm going to click to the right of that and make this into a smart object. So we're in good shape over there. Now I would like to blur this somewhat. So I'm going to go up to my Filter menu, down to Blur. I'm going to choose Gaussian Blur in this case. And let's see what I've got. That looks not bad over here. So I think maybe 20, maybe drop it back a little bit, maybe to 17 pixels. And that's looking good. Uh, again, remember I can change this anytime I want because this is a smart object now. I'm going to also change the blend mode here from normal to a linear light. And that's looking a little bit strong, so I'm going to kill some of the fill, maybe back down to 50% here. I can apply that because I've got an adjustment layer happening on this, uh, on this layer. And finally, I'm going to pull this up a little bit. And what I want to do is get rid of that part of the rainbow that's behind this rock. To do that, I'm going to add a layer mask. I'm going to pull in my brush, make sure that I've got black as the foreground color. Start painting away here like this until I get the rainbow away from the foreground area, like that. Again, pull back by doing Command-0. I see that I've got my rainbow in place. And with that in place, I'm going to take another snapshot and call this rainbow. Now, what you may not know is that Hawaii, in addition to being a kind of a hot place, can also be really cold. Right here, we're at 6,000 feet, and therefore, it's not uncommon for you to have freezing conditions. So I think a little bit of snow might be appropriate. I'm going to turn off my rainbow. I'm going to add a new layer down over here. And I'm going to use another technique of Deeks, which is to select things on the basis of color. To do that, I'm going to go to my Select menu and choose Color Range. And what I'm going for are the red areas in my image. I can adjust the fuzziness to select more of the red or less of it, but this looks not bad from the preview that I'm getting here. I'll say OK. Now I'm distracted by the marching ants, so I'm going to do a Command H, which will then hide them. They're still there, but I'm not seeing them. I need to switch my colors back over on the left to the default colors with black in the foreground, white in the background, and I'm going to flip those guys around so white is in the foreground. I do that by typing the letter X for exchange. And now I'm going to delete to that foreground color, and I do that by doing Option Delete. On the PC, this would be Alt Delete. I'm going to do it a couple of times just to get a little bit more snow happening here, make it nice and wintry, and that's looking not bad. Now, it's easy to forget to those marching ants because they're invisible. I'm going to do Command D to drop that selection on the PC, Control D. Things are looking pretty good, but you know this could be a little bit dimmer looking. So I think what I want to do is add a layer style to my background layer here, the crater layer. I'm going to go to my layer styles and add a color overlay. And red probably is not going to do it for me. So I'm going to click here, choose a nice blue, maybe something like that. Looks pretty good. I'm going to choose the color. I'm going to change the blend mode, in this case, to multiply. It will always make stuff darker. And I'm as well going to drop down the opacity, maybe down to 40 or 50%. So this is looking fairly bluish for snow. I want to do two other things, however. And remember, this is our snow layer that's up over here. And I'm going to use another technique of Deeks, and that is the driving rain, number 111. I'm going to do that by creating a new layer, Shift-Command-N, and that would be the appropriate uh, Shift-Control-N on the PC. I'm going to change my blend mode over here to screen and fill it with a neutral color black. That sounds pretty good. We don't see any effect, although we can see in the upper right-hand corner it is that way. I'm going to go up to the Filter menu, down to Noise, add some noise here. And that's looking actually not too bad. So I've got about 60% Gaussian Blur and Monochromatic. I want to add some motion to this, so up to the Filter menu, down to Blur again, and this time for Motion Blur. And I've got this going at a 45 degree angle and a degree of 6 pixels. We'll say OK. And I've got a pretty good looking image right here of which I'm going to take one more snapshot and call this Snow. Now I can cycle between the three that I've got, my rainbow, the original, and finally our snow layer. And that's it. Thanks.